Hmm, nice badge. Keep an eye on the elevator. I'm, I'm gonna go wait for forensics. Okay. Let me know oh, when they get here. Oh, excuse me. Message from the sheriff. Prince asked more for five reports. If I can't bring back their author, I must bring back the reports at least. I'll know them when I see them. Special Agent Smith. The FBI! Finally, some backup! Lieutenant's expecting you. Straight ahead. Watch out for the bloodstains. Forensics hasn't been through here yet. Got it. The victim lost a lot of blood. Lieutenant Anderson, I'm in charge of the investigation. Special Agent Smith, FBI. Really? Smith? Is that some kind of joke? No, why? Uh, let it go. Never mind. I'll give you the DL. We got a call from the caretaker around 2.15. He told us that one of his residents was brought in with an injury carried by his bodyguards. We sent a squad car that got here around 2.45. Is the caretaker still here? He's in the living room. But I don't think you'll be able to get anything useful out of him. Poor guy's in shock. Who was the first person on the scene? That would be Baker. He's somewhere around here. It shouldn't be hard to find him. Okay, then what? When they stepped inside, the guys came face to face with that. Do we know who the victim is? Yeah, he had his ID on him. It's the owner, a guy named Jason Moore. I don't know who this guy pissed off, but things didn't work out too well for him. Did you secure all the exits and entrances to the building? Yes, we've got men on the ground floor and in the parking garage. How do you get to the parking garage? You'll have to ask the caretaker. He's the one who took my men down there. What have you got on Moore? He was an asset manager. But if you ask me, he was involved in some shady stuff that we're sure to find out about. It's not every day that an accountant gets his head chopped off. Do we know if he had a family? Yeah, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. The wife, Lydia Moore, 34 years old, architect, dual citizen of Costa Rica and the US, no criminal record. Yeah, we're trying to get a hold of her. The daughter, June. We've looked and she's not here either. Where are the bodyguards? We haven't found anyone yet. Go on. We're still looking through the head. We're waiting on forensics for everything else, but they're busy with another case. What case? You haven't heard? At one international place, they say it was a real bloodbath. So, you're here to take over the case? No, no. I'm working on something else. Moore's name popped up in one of our investigations, but I can't talk about it. Okay, I'll let my team know. Agent Smith from the FBI is here. 
We're still in charge of the investigation, so please cooperate with him. He was decapitated. It was a pretty clean cut. Bullet wound in the right hip. A signet ring with a beaver on it. More what to MIT. There's a retainer here somewhere. Moore's driver's license. Interesting. Come on, it'll pass, don't worry. Are you all right? Yeah, just a little faint. I was <laughs> expecting it, but then... Uh, give me a minute and I'll, I'll head back. The sight of blood. We've all been there, haven't we? No. Oh, there are blood stains on the garbage chute. There are bloody prints on these bags. Lydia's planner. Lydia's life seems to revolve around June and her home in Costa Rica, with Jason often absent. Why is the FBI interested in Moore? His name came up in several financial investigations we're working on. Department has changed since my last visit. I have to question him. He's still freaked out. I don't think it's the right time. Mr. Adams? No. This can't be happening. What a nightmare. So much blood. I've got a few questions. I tried to help him. I told him we should call 911. I told him. Sir, listen to me. It's all right. Calm down. You're safe and you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I need you to answer a few questions for me. I... I... <sighs> yes, of course. What do you want to know?
Did you know Mr. Moore well? We weren't friends, if that's what you're asking. But we got to know each other. With time. <laughs> he was a creature of habit. Since he worked late, he would often ask me for things at night. A newspaper, batteries, ice. I, I think he asked me for just about everything. I prided myself on always being able to get what he needed, no matter what time it was. You'd have thought he pretty much lived after dark. Like his clients. Did Mr. Moore have many visitors? For a man with his status, it was nothing surprising. But, well... Yes? His visitors mostly came in the middle of the night. I must admit, that's a little unusual. That's what working for us is like. He told me he had a lot of foreign clients, and he had to juggle different time zones. That's what working from home is like. He had colleagues over for late-night meetings, too. <laughs> but since little June was born, not as many people came around. That was wise. Did he have any enemies that you were aware of? No. He was a very respectable man. No bad company or anything. Except for us. Without any disrespect to the deceased, were you aware of any extramarital affairs he may have had? Mr. Moore was a good man. He would never have disrespected his wife or even contemplated it, I'm sure. She could have been okay with it. There were no young women coming and going. That's a very inappropriate question. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Do you know his wife? Mrs. Moore is a model resident. She always has something nice to say to the staff, and is the first to welcome new neighbors, too. A true lady. Do you think she could have been having an affair? I refuse to speak ill of Mrs. Moore. I will not dignify that question with a response. Do you know where she is? Mr. Moore told me she'd gone to their home in Costa Rica. She goes there pretty often. <laughs> She's an architect, and she likes to work in her home country. She has family there. Do you think anyone could have been so angry with her that they could have taken it out on her husband? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's true that lots of people could have been jealous of her. But not to that point. I imagine the girl left with her mother? Not at all. It was the start of the school year, and Mrs. Moore left two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since Monday when Mr. Moore took her to school on the first day. She must be staying with a friend. I, poor little thing. Thank heaven she wasn't here. Do you know his bodyguards? Yeah, there's uh, Jack, uh, James, and Wu. But you won't hear me singing their praises. Why not? Oh. They're good at strutting around and acting tough when everything is going well. But where were they tonight? Can you tell me that? That was their job, right? They were paid to... to protect him. Do you have any idea where they might have gone? No, but believe you me. If I ever see them again, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Tell me about the evening again, please. What happened tonight? <sighs> Mr. Moore left with his, his three bodyguards uh, earlier in the evening. One of them got in the car, and Mr. Moore came down around midnight. And then? 
They came back around 2 a.m. Uh, Mr. Moore was limping. He, he was leaning on one of his bodyguards and he, he was bleeding. Was he injured? I told him I could call an ambulance or a doctor, but he didn't answer. I went closer to insist, but Wu told me they were in control of the situation, that it was no big deal. They went upstairs and I saw drops of blood in front of the elevator. I told myself they were being unreasonable. What did those two goons know about it? So I called Mr. Moore on the internal line several times. Did he pick up? Not once. So I went upstairs and rang the doorbell, but nobody answered. So I went back down to the front desk and I called you. The lieutenant told me there was an access to the basement. Yes, using the service elevator through, through the kitchen. You need a magnetic pass to, to use it. I gave the spare to your colleagues who wanted to go down there. I still have the original. Do you want it? Please. Thank you for your statement. You have to find out who did this, officer. Justice needs to be done for him. <laughs> and for his family. And we need to find out who's messing with us. That's what we're here for. You can count on us. Stick around in case we have more questions. Somebody slept here. What a mess. Nobody's done the cleaning in ages. Jason, Lydia, and June. A little family all together. And in large format. Jason, proud of his family and his success. Lydia, radiant and beaming. <laughs> June, who looks more like Jason than Lydia. jungle in the heart of Boston, a truly peaceful oasis. Why were you looking for peace, Jason? I warned you, Jason. God, did I warn you. We destroy all that we touch. They wanted to bring a little vacation back home. It seems like gardening is a real passion for Lydia. Not sure Jason shares your enthusiasm.
the weapons is missing. Sorry, I'm busy. Sorry, Smith. A little busy here. Searching here was looking for something specific. Ugh, what a mess. A fortress security catalog. They install highly secure rooms. I beg your pardon? Don't mess with me. Who are you? Calm down, Mr. Bazori. I meant no disrespect. I work for the Council. Why would the Council have sent her without warning me? Most of the time, they send me to clean up. Are you behind this? No. I got here after it happened. What's that file you've got? Oh, an account file. Have it. Here you go. Let's see how much she knows. All right. What have you found? Oh, I'm a little embarrassed. I'm not really allowed to talk about my missions. I don't have time for this. Give me what you have. Like I said, Mr. Bazori, I'm here on behalf of the Council. You know as well as I do that if you don't know about it already, you're not supposed to. Think very carefully about what you're going to say, Lane. I'll ask you one more time. What are you doing here? You're putting me in an awkward position. You know our rules. You know you don't have a choice. What are you playing at? I appreciate your consideration. I know that my life is in the balance. I'm listening. I was sent to get Mr. Moore and his papers. But why didn't the Prince tell me? I don't know what's going on, but I really don't have time to lose. What do you- You can be sure I'll report this to both the Council and the Prince. No, please. I don't have a choice. I beg you. I'm only following orders. If you complain about me, I'm done for. Promise me you won't tell anyone about it. Please. 
I've always been a loyal servant of the Council. I'm risking my life. You're right. I really don't want to. So be it. This will be our secret. Fine. If we've both got to be here, we might as well work together. Well, I've already searched the wife's office. Nothing. Then I went through his office. It looks like someone has already cleaned it up. I didn't find anything. I'm working on the bookshelf in this hallway, and I found something here. What? A file on the Domain's finances the Council would rather not see end up in the police's hands. Give it to me. I must return to the court tonight. <laughs> There's no need, sir. I have to destroy them. Listen, have you thought about what you want? Your career? I know how to stay in my place. I can't think. I must obey my master, no matter the cost. Quit stalling, Lahane. Give me the files. I'm sorry. I can't. Sorry. I've got orders, Mr. Bazori. Lieutenant, over here! What is it, Lahane? I just found these files. We need to take them to the Financial Crimes Unit. Come with me to the elevator, and I'll show you, sir. Let's go. I'll be seeing you soon, Sergeant Lahane. My sire always said that at a prince's court, like in a game of chess, you must know when to sacrifice your pawns. June's whole life in pictures. Jason and June, probably on a beach in Costa Rica. June dressed up for Halloween. June celebrating her fourth birthday. The 
The Diary of an Eight-Year-Old Girl, June, Jason's Daughter. Did you inherit your mother's artistic talent, June? with a shower and a tub. June's father spoils her. You must be Smith. Yes. Rickman. Have you found anything? Not yet. This is the girl's room. There's no sign of her. I guess that's a good thing. I'm going to take a look around. Let me know if you find anything. Okay, Smith. I've never been in this part of the apartment before. It must have been used to dress a wound. A bottle of disinfectant, obviously handled by someone who was bleeding. The concept of a laundry basket seems too abstract for some people. A cell phone. Locked, of course. Someone tossed a bunch of stuff in this bag in a hurry to leave.
will you ever change? I understand better now. The prince asked more for a complete report on the members of the Primogen. Jason, Lydia, June, in Costa Rica, I think. Poems in Lydia's mother tongue. desk. The blueprints of a house on the west coast of Costa Rica. Pura Vida Extension Project. This is where I met Moore for the first time. Human logic is beyond me. What's the point in doing that? Stock Exchange. Thank you. 
account statements from different banks. Nothing that concerns us. Son of a bitch wasn't messing around. Have you seen all that cash? Deeds, stock portfolios. Moore doesn't just manage the Camarillas business. Jean, are you making plans in case things go south? Or are you planning to leave us? An auction. Acquisition of Lot 87. Dijon Siaka. Hmm, a trumpet belonging to Don Ellis. put some money on that. Officer Baker, can I help you? Were you the first person to arrive at the scene of the crime? Yes, sir. My partner and I were the first to get here. Just tell me about it. We got the call around 2.20. The caretaker had called because a resident was injured. It took us about 20 minutes to get here. The poor guy was in a panic. He told us he'd seen one of the tenants, Jason Moore, enter the building, and he looked hurt. He was being held up by his two bodyguards, and he was bleeding a lot. Did he see the wound? Yeah. He said the victim was holding his right hip. So I went upstairs with the caretaker. We saw blood in the elevator and on the landing. I rang the doorbell, but nobody answered, so the caretaker opened the door. I identified myself. There were traces of blood leading down the hall away from the entrance, and just after that, I uh, found the decapitated body. Did your partner come with you? No, he stayed in the foyer to secure the entrance to the building. Did you touch the body? No, there was nothing I could do to help him, so I uh, secured the scene. I put my gloves on to take his ID out of his jacket pocket so we could identify him. Then I called it in. Where was the caretaker during that time? I told him not to come inside, but he followed me. When he saw the corpse, he was really shaken. He wouldn't let go of me. Then what did you do? I called for backup. They told me that forensics would get here as soon as they could. They were out at another case. That was their top priority. After that? I secured the entrance to the apartment. After that, I searched the ground floor. There was nobody around. But from the looks of things, somebody searched the apartment. When Sergeant Lehane got here, she took care of upstairs. It's a good thing, too, because it took everyone else another 15 minutes to get here. She didn't find anyone there. So there's no sign of the family, then? Nothing. The place is empty. If you remember anything else, let me know. Of course.
Hmm, there was a lot of money involved. We're not going to get a return on our investment anytime soon. A thank you letter from Fortress Security. After the installation of a system for more, maybe he kept it for reference. I've already heard about this company somewhere. Okay, sure. When I knew him, he took better care of himself. What's going on with him? Where in God's name is forensics? Wet laundry, mold, it's been here for several days. Can you take a look at the cards, please? Oh. Hey, mister. You can't go into the parking garage. It's a crime scene. Agent Smith, FBI. Oh, hi. Officer Norton. Hey, they didn't tell me you were coming down. Got something? Wyatt saw more leave at 225. Wyatt? The parking attendant. Pot security guard, pot valet. Anyway, a car that belonged to the victim left in a hurry. Or at least he thought it was more, until he found out he got his head cut off. There's skid marks on the ground and uh, signs of a minor accident at the exit. He must have really been in a hurry. Well, I've got a few questions. Where's the witness? Wyatt, 
He's uh, in the security booth over there. He's super nice. I don't think you'll need to question him again. You mentioned skid marks. Yeah, they're very distinct. They start from his parking space and go all the way to the exit. They clean this place twice a day, so there's no doubt they're fresh. The driver peeled out of here in a hurry. And you said there was an accident near the exit. Yeah, a minor one. Broken headlight, paint marks. He must have had a hard time handling it. Do we know what kind of car it was? Yeah, we called it in. It's the victim's sports car. Wyatt said there's only the sedan left. Did you find anything else? No, that's it. Since we're still waiting for forensics, we gotta be careful. But you know how it is, right? Let me know if you have uh, any other questions. Hello, Mr. Bazori. You must be mistaken. I'm Smith. Agent Smith. Yeah, sure. Do I know you? Everyone knows who you are. Is it just me, or are you pals with all the cops around here? Let's just say I'm pretty... intuitive. You know what I mean. In the years you've been hunting us, You've acquired a hell of a reputation among our kind. I didn't know you would come. I'm not looking for any trouble. I, I... I didn't do anything wrong. I... Just who the hell are you? Me? I, I'm nobody. The name's Wyatt Alvarez. I was embraced five years ago. Mm. A thin blood. I spent years hunting them when Quentin King ruled Boston. Unfortunately for me... The blood of my sire was already weak, so I can still catch glimpses of the sun, but I don't have actual powers. Who created you? His name was Victor, but he died last year. Do the kindred know you exist? Yeah, yeah. I followed the rules, but the prince told me he never wanted to see me again, so... I try not to make waves. I try to help out, here and there. I'm hoping someone will notice one day, and I'll be allowed to become a true kindred. That's not very likely, if you ask me. I hope it works out for you. I'm doing what I can. Actually, if you could put a word in with the Prince, I'd be eternally grateful. I don't get involved in that kind of thing. Of course, obviously. But seeing as how I'm already working for your child, Mr. Underwood, I thought that maybe... You work for Beryl? Yes, I also work at a red salon, a couple of hours each day. What do you do there, exactly? Cleaning, mostly. What are you doing here, then? 
Uh, I thought it was a pretty cushy gig. It leaves me with a lot of spare time, even while I'm on the job. And it also means I can live at night. Are you involved in what happened up there? Not at all. I swear, I've got a sweet job here. I'd never risk it. So what happened? I've got no clue. My shift started at 10 p.m., as usual. The sixth floor tenant left around 11. At midnight, one of Mr. Moore's bodyguards came down to get the car. They were going to a party, apparently. I didn't see them come back. Then, around 2.20 or so, one of Mr. Moore's cars went flying out of here. It hit the wall near the exit. Did you recognize the car? Yeah, it was his sports car. The only one like it here. Did you see who was behind the wheel? No, it's got tinted windows. I thought it was Mr. Moore at first. But from what happened upstairs, <laughs> I doubt it now. Hey, were you the one who- You really think if it was me who did it, I'd be standing around here trying to figure out what happened? What can you tell me about Moore? I saw him a lot. He's the tenant I got to know best because of his working hours. And he was the most generous when it came to maintaining his cars, too. Anything in particular about Mrs. Moore? Yeah, I see her every once in a while. Sometimes I see her with a girl, coming back from vacation. <sighs> sure is good they weren't here tonight. What makes you say that? Well, Mrs. Moore's car. I haven't seen it in the garage for weeks, and she's the one who took the girl to school. Mr. Moore told me they were on vacation, and he was going to go join them soon. Did you see the bodyguards today? James came by earlier this evening to move Mr. Moore's car, but I haven't seen them since. That'll be all for now. At your service, Mr. Bazori. nothing in it. forced. Uh, no. That's impossible. <sighs> Locked. Uh, no. That's impossible. I have to find a way to open it. Can't be forced. <sighs> Locked. Access to the trash is restricted here.
Did you want something else? Hey, what kind of cooks have you got in your trunk? Oh, I see you've found my little treats. I haven't got much there. There have been a lot of orders lately. I, I, I must still have some of that rust elixir left. How do you open the dumpsters in the garbage room? What dumpster? The dump... <laughs> Are you toying with me? No, but the cops already looked. There's nothing there. Open it. Mr. Missouri, I promise you won't find anything there. And I can't open it anyway. It's for staff only. Why do you want to go through the trash anyway? There were some traces of blood on the garbage chute in the kitchen upstairs. Somebody tossed something, and I want to know what it was. Oh, that's why. I understand. Listen. We're just gonna forget this conversation ever happened, and- Excuse me? You didn't just try to corrupt my memories, did you? Oh, no. Uh, I I'm so sorry, Mr. Missouri. I shouldn't have. I know. How can I make it up to you? Before I get really angry, do you want to tell me what the hell is going on? I'm scared, Mr. Bazori. Scared of what you're gonna think when you see what I've been doing in there. I didn't mean any disrespect. You're not doing a very good job. Get a grip, man. Yes. Yes, Mr. Bazori. Open it now. Just promise me you won't touch anything. Some of my stuff is in there. Please, don't touch it. I've been sent by the Prince of Boston. Do you really think I owe you anything? That's not what I meant. You talk too much. Open the door. Right away. All right, it's open. Wouldn't you rather tell me what you're hiding in there? Well, I cook a little. A guy's gotta survive. I don't have to tell you that. I don't make a whole lot of money here. What do you cook? Oh, a little of everything. But I've got all my stuff in there. And there's some pretty rare ingredients. Rare? Yeah. And kinda illegal, too. Such as? In some recipes, well... I use vials of Kindred's blood, for instance. Whose blood? Well... It depends on what I can find. Okay, but what have you got right now, exactly? If I tell you, can it... Stay just between us? You're not fucking going to start again. Okay. O okay, I... I managed to obtain some of Quentin King's blood. But of course. This guy's the perfect patsy. I almost pity him. Hmm. King answered the beckoning at the same time as the rest of the city's elders. It can't be his blood. One more thing, boss. Don't call me that. I hope we'll meet again, Mr. Missouri. to be recycled. Why, it's makeshift lab. And it's not meth. Who would want to take that? Empty soda cans. 
rusty cans. A shoe with worn out leather. I wonder what he's cooking with that garbage. Old chicken feet. Nothing of interest. Ugh, packaging to be recycled. Expecting to see you here. Woo. If it was a bodyguard who died in the lobby, where the hell is more? Nothing of interest. Hilda's planned for everything, even her eventual end. I've just got one more question. Yes. What do you want to know? Does the name Fortress Security mean anything to you? Does it ever? Hard to forget them. They came out here last year to work on a project for about two weeks. And Mrs. Moorhead interior designers here just about every season. But this time... The workers showed no respect for the common areas. There were four of them, and I can tell you, they made quite a mess. I had to clean up the debris and plaster they left behind them for weeks. Any idea what they were working on? No. I mind my own business. Four workers here for two weeks who left behind loads of debris and plaster. They weren't here for a small project. I think we're done here. Thank you.
it must have been used to dress a wound. Jason, so that's where you are hiding. Huh? huh? What the? Good evening, Jason. Mr. Bazori. I, uh, how did you? Maybe think about letting us know the next time you build a private bunker. Uh, it's just that I. She sent me to find you. No. Not now. She found out about everything, didn't she? I don't understand anything you just said. But get up. We're going. I can't. I absolutely have to catch a plane tonight. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm begging you. Please. Just let me go. Before we go, what the hell is this mess all over your place? It's not my fault. I... I tried to cover up my departure. I... My bodyguards wanted to take me to the Prince, right after the shooting at the party. But I... I couldn't. Your flight? Yeah. I wanted to buy me some time. I pretended I had to, to get some files that were at my house for the prince. Once I got here, I sent James to my office with my car. Supposedly to pick up some more files there. I killed Wu by taking him by surprise. I cut off his head and threw it down the garbage chute. I put my college class ring on him and gave him my wallet. I'm sorry, Mr. Bazori. I had no choice. You don't do things halfway, do you? We've wasted enough time here. Get up. I'm not going to be able to go with you, Mr. Bazori. I, I lost too much blood. I'm having a hard time staying conscious. I must take you back to the Prince, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm begging you. I've always refused. I, I want to stay free. I'm not really giving you a choice. Drink. That's enough. June will die if you don't let me go. 
Stay behind me. Stay behind me. Oh, Agent Smith, wait. Is that Jason Moore? You found him? Oh, Everything we gotta get to the- fine, officer. I'll take care of him. Oh, okay. Sure. Stay close. Hey, stop! Don't move! Put your hands behind your head, damn it! Don't On the shoot. ground! I'm gonna shoot! That's enough, officer. My head. Me, Mr. Bazori. We work for the same person. All right. Take him. <laughs> <laughs> 